Source is a podcast made by women for women. We're looking at the topics that are influencing women and the world they live in, and we're shedding a light on those topics. We're speaking with the national experts. We're bringing you the stories you're only going to hear here. Don't miss out on being in the know. Subscribe to Soul Source wherever you listen to podcasts today and leave us a review. This part's really important. That way, we can continue to bring you the content you love each and every week. So buckle up, Soul Source Society, because we're about to get started. The pent up demand that the travel experts predicted is happening, absolutely happening. Uh, we are uh, swamped, but in a good way. Without a doubt, the travel industry was hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. But as restrictions begin to lift and more and more people are vaccinated, the industry is bouncing back. We are now in the heart of summer and people are getting the itch to travel, but is the world ready for them? Fox World Travel is noticing an increase in domestic travel, but if international travel is on your list, there is a lot to know before you go. Rose Gray, Business Relationship Director at Fox World Travel, joins us today to talk about what to expect when you're planning your trip. Welcome to the show, Rose. We are so excited to have you here at Soul Source today and to talk about travel. I know myself personally, like, cannot wait to get back in the seat of things and to start traveling again. Like, from your experience in the travel industry, what are you seeing right now? Are people like raring to go? Is there some hesitancy? What's going on in the world of travel? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. This is a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, all things travel, love talking about it. And to answer your second question, yes and yes. Uh, the the pent up demand that the travel experts predicted is happening, absolutely happening. Um, we are uh, swamped, but in a good way, looking to hire actually in, you know, who isn't right now? And uh, some hesitancy, um, want to travel, but need a little more information. Where can I go? What are the COVID protocols? Will my experience be compromised upon arrival? What can I expect? What if it cancels? Those kinds of questions are on everybody's mind. Yeah, so there's so much to unpack, and I meant that with every intention, that word, is in what you just said. So I know you and I spoke earlier, and I, I mentioned the travails of my travels um, from last week. So what can a traveler expect? And for me, I learned a few things um, as the travel industry gets back up to speed is maybe cushion your vacation with an extra day on the um, the departure and the arrival, you know, just give yourself, allow some extra time. Domestically, are you seeing that in terms of airlines, changing schedules, that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, yesterday and the day before was a banner or not so banner day for American Airlines. They are canceling flights and changing schedules like we've never seen before. And it is not out of spite or, or any other a terrible reason, they are just short staffed. They're understaffed. They don't have aircraft available. Their crew oh. are extending themselves and then that's not, then they can't fly. So American Airlines is, a, uh, is the leader right now in the cancellation and schedule change world, but every major airline is going through this right now. So exactly what you said, be prepared to pivot. Take a chill pill, pack <laughs> pants, however you want to say it. And maybe, like you said, don't schedule yourself so tight the day that you return that you have a meeting that if you miss it, it's going to be the end of the world or the end of your career or who knows what. Really, you need to be super duper flexible right now. And um, certainly that's been our mantra throughout this entire COVID experience. But now as we're getting back to travel, it's more important than ever. Yeah, and you know, you bring up a good point, like be flexible and just be, be mindful of what the world is coming out of right now. You know, being flexible and being accommodating a little bit. Like I mentioned to you, I think my 
my time and actually the date that I was leaving changed like three times at least before I actually left for Palm Springs. And then my, my return time that changed three times. But all I kept thinking is the industry, the airlines, like they're just getting back up to speed. I assume they're trying to figure out volumes. And so that's why things are fluctuating so much. So maybe temper your expert expectations. It's not like it's going to be perhaps prior to the pandemic, but you know, for myself, I was just so happy to get on a plane and go like, so they could have changed it a few more times on me. I was actually okay with that. As long as I was making my connections, anything else that people should be prepared for if they're getting back up to speed or they're thinking about travel plans today? Well, we're also reminding everybody that masks are still mandatory. So you don't want to be the person that shows up at the airport, shows up for your flight. They've got masks, but then you're at their mercy. You're wearing their masks instead of maybe your favorite mask that matches your travel outfit, perhaps. So that's one thing. The other thing is you're probably not going to get fed um, maybe a snack on some airlines, but they're very happy to allow you to bring food within reason onto the aircraft. And if you are traveling alone, you've got no one to consider but yourself. But if you've got kids or traveling companions, you might be the hero if you're the one that opens up that carry-on bag and says, look at all the snacks I brought along. So think that through. The airlines will be very accommodating with regard to water. They know that we need to stay hydrated. The the aircraft cabin itself is a very dry environment. So they want to keep everybody hydrated, but certainly just be prepared for those kinds of things. Silly as that seems, we're trying to be patient and now our stomach is growling. That's never a good thing. (laughs) No, I never want to be stuck on a plane and hungry. I will tell you that my backpack was full of granola bars. So anytime I was a little bit hungry, you know, one other thing that came up um, during my my last trip, and I, I had a little bit of a panic on the plane out to Palm Springs. I was talking to somebody on the plane, and she mentioned something about if you have your special ID. Do you know what I'm talking about, where you're supposed to have? Uh, is the airlines and the government, are they relying on that right now, that people are going to have that? They, they moved it again. So what... Okay companion was talking about actually is real id and id has been moved forward several times at first it was to accommodate the COVID situation the the it was difficult to get to a dmv and that was where you were getting this taken care of then they moved it again and now they've moved it to may 3rd 2023 and what they're going to do what the government is hoping to do is uh give give some consistency because every state's driver's license looks different we all when we're with people from other states we get out our driver's license and look but but now we've got that star in the right hand corner that is going to be the consistent and unifying force throughout this entire thing now some people have the misguided notion that that's going to replace a passport because you bring your passport to the dmv when you get that real id it does not replace a passport so people need to be aware of that thanks for clearing that up because the my uh, this woman that i met on the plane I was so panicked because I usually do travel with my passport because I don't have my real ID. So then I had my passport FedExed out to me (laughs) out in California because I was so paranoid. I was like, what if I can't get back on the plane on the way home? So it's good to hear that that date, that deadline has been extended. So talking, we talked a little bit about domestic travel. Now talk to us about international travel like what is going on can you travel internationally some countries you can some countries are closed down like what does that landscape look like so every day i am inundated with articles from travel publications that are telling us who's opened in the eu in the european union how they're doing it what the protocol is what the requirements are and it's different all the time. Now, interestingly enough, I read an article just today that Austria is going to open up June 24th. So that's great. That's that's now. 
the thing is, it gives you the list of you, if you are not vaccinated, you must present a negative COVID test, you, or you may present that you had COVID, or you may present that vaccine. And right now, for those people who are vaccinated, you know you have a little card. And that is all you need at this point. The EU is trying very hard to come up with, again, some kind of uniform system, and that's going to be a digital vaccine passport. I'm convinced of it. It's just a matter of who gets the contract, who gets the business. There's 20 plus of them out there right now. And so somebody's going to end up awarded this business, which all the EU is going to accept. So that's going to be great. But one thing that was of interest to me, it said, if you were vaccinated within nine months. So as you move down the road, we all think that that vaccine is the golden ticket. There's going to be a timestamp on that thing, possibly. Good point. There might be things to consider. So once again, it's, it's a matter of doing your due diligence, doing your research. Uh, we're lucky at Fox World Travel. We have a tool at our, uh, at our hands th that is, um, gives us such access to all the protocol for the entire globe. Now, what it does is it gives us links that we can send out to our customers that have the government information. We've had some customers that say, wait a minute, this is not what the CDC says. No, it is not. It is what that government says. So those are things you have to differentiate as you move through your research. So talk a little bit about that then. So I know in years past, consumers for the most part, they it's all about booking your own place to stay, booking your own flights, travel, however that looks. For the travel agent industry, do you see that tide turning a little bit? Like people are like, oh yeah, I'm working with a travel agent. I've had enough. It, uh, so much so. Uh, if COVID did anything good, it was shine a light on the travel agent community because the consumers that were on hold, I mean, honestly, the horror stories we've been getting are remarkable. On hold for four, five, six hours, only to be disconnected. Um, mm. Schedule changes that they needed to work through for a 48 hour from now flight. And I can't get an airline person to answer my questions. And truthfully, the industry on the other side, the vendor side, the cruise lines, the hotel companies, the airlines, they're in the same predicament that we are in, uh, as a frontline travel agent. They furloughed many, many of their mm. Some of those staff may be called back, but they're not coming back in droves. Some of them found other jobs and said, you know what, I don't need that aggravation anymore. And some of them are new to the industry and they've got to get them trained. And so we're, we're expecting those kinds of things as well. But when you're working with a travel agency, especially one that has got some clout, the preferred partners of, of some size, you're, we have special numbers. I certainly cannot give that out to my customer, but I, can, I have a, a special number. This morning, I had to call British Airways for a canceled flight for a customer from London to Johannesburg. British Airways just plain canceled it. Um, she said she had heard about it. I sent her the message and said, I'm working on it. Well, she thought she needed to work on it a little bit as well. She said, they told me my whole time was going to be three hours. I hung up. I called this morning. I got through and three minutes. Okay. So you as a travel agent have a special line to those in the travel industry. That is a huge benefit to travelers. And I'm, 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 I don't know that I really understood that before. So I think people need to understand that, that that is really, that is your difference. Like you have that network, those connections, the direct line. That's amazing. <laughs> It is amazing. And then the other thing that we bring to the table is the wherewithal to maybe have three things going at one time. I can have this phone set up to be on hold with this person. We have a network within our company that somebody who will be on a call with a very popular vendor, shall we say, one of our major cruise lines, they'll just put a SOS out to the entire team and say, I'm on hold with XYZ cruise line. When I'm finished with them, who wants them next? And then we just them around so love that really well and and again it's just a, a feather in our cap 
we are seeing people who had never in their wildest dreams considered working with a travel consultant, travel advisor, now coming to us and saying, you know what, I am done with this. I am no longer a DIYer. I want you to handle it for me. So yeah, it, if nothing else, that's what COVID did for us. That's so good to hear. An industry bounce back. You're on your way like that. That's amazing. So how, if, if somebody's not working with a travel agent and they are, um, trying to find out about an international destination, where should they go and do their research? So typically it's a government website because truly if you go to the CDC website, they're going to say, do not travel right now. They've got uh, level fours and level threes on a lot of countries for varying reasons. It could be terrorism, it could be crime, it could be something else, but it, it puts it in, in a bad light. So another really good resource is travel.state.gov. Again, I have it memorized because I use it all day long. Travel.state.gov. You then have the wherewithal to pick an international destination. And then our government is providing you with the information they have from that government about the restrictions and protocols and requirements to get into their uh, country. So along those lines, I, I shared a little bit of, of my horror story being in another country. I had my wedding ring stolen um, out of the safe. Like it was a whole nightmare for me. And then um, I was trying to, I, finally it clicked like I need to get a hold of somebody at the embassy. And, and that started a whole learning process for me trying to get a hold. And then I realized as an international traveler, you're actually supposed to register with the U.S. Embassy in that other country. Can you talk more about the STEP program? I don't think people understand that, it's, that it exists and what it's there for. Sure. So on that same website, travel.state.gov, uh, in a very large banner, it will give you an opportunity to enroll in STEP, which stands for Smart Travel smart traveler enrollment program. And what that does is it lets the government know where it is you're going. You put in, I will be in Austria from this date to this date. I will be in Germany from this date to this date. I will be in Northern Italy from this date to this date, flying home from Rome on this date. Pretty much that's what it is. And then in the unlikely event that there is some catastrophic reason that the government needs to find you, so let's, let's look at the positive first. They have something that they need to tell you from home. Your parents need to get a hold of you. A sibling needs to get a hold of you. They can track you down that way if your technology fails you somewhere along the line. Also, if there would be some terrorist event or some health scare or anything like that, the government will get a hold of you and say, we can help you come to this facility, come to this building. And what I use as, a, in a, as an example of probably one of the most, the biggest reason I myself have been using Step Forever is you remember years back, there was an uprising in Cairo and the U.S. government sent an empty plane, deadheaded a plane from the U.S. to Cairo and gave everybody a 24 hour opportunity to get to Cairo and get on this plane and get out of there. And so some of the objections we've heard about this program are, wait a minute, I don't need the government knowing where I am. Oh, my dear traveler, if you don't <laughs> scan your passport, the government knows where you are, you are sadly mistaken. And my other answer to that is, if the government is going to come and save me, in any way, shape, or form, I don't care if they know where I am. Please come and save me. They claim that this information is purged after you traveled. I'm not certain that it's accurate or not, but it doesn't matter to me. I, I feel very comfortable uh, enrolling in that program every time. And I do it even, uh, Lisa, when I travel to places like Mexico and Canada and Jamaica, I still do it because I've got that in my back pocket if I need it. And that's a very comforting feeling. And I'll tell you, I, I can't say it enough. Our experience in this other country 
showed me how vulnerable we are being in another country and something terrible has happened. You know, so I mentioned the theft of my ring out of a safe, out of our hotel room. Um, we had a horrible experience. My husband, the hotel manager, would do nothing about it said, if you want to do something about it, you can go visit the police. And then my husband had to like leave the resort, go to the police station. I was like, if you're not back in two hours, I'm calling the embassy. I had a hard time getting a hold of the embassy. So you don't realize it until something happens to you that you don't have your safety net. And I really encourage people to enroll in the STEP program. I will never, ever go to another country without doing that. It's just another safety net. Um, and if you can be proactive in doing that, you certainly should. So thinking about now, fast forward to if I am a single woman and I am traveling, let's say internationally, are is there anything that in addition to enrolling in the STEP program, are there some tips for women traveling solo today? And I have to say that I, I watched a Netflix uh, series on The Serpent. And after watching that Netflix series, if you haven't watched that, it made me rethink, again, the whole being by yourself, international travel. So what are some tips, especially for women today? Well, first of all, as you're thinking about traveling solo, I always stop and ask or pause to think, What's the intent of your travel? What's the purpose of your travel? I talked to one of my friends who was going to do this and she picked a destination. I said, wait, wait, why are you going there? She said, oh, my neighbors went there and they loved it. I said, do you know anything about this country? No, not really. What's the purpose <laughs> for going there? So I feel like you should choose based on a dream or a desire, or to immerse yourself into their culture only after maybe you've done some research and planning, not just on a whim. I think second of all, it's okay to, as we call it, fly by the seat of your pants. Maybe you're okay with doing the, I'll get accommodations once I get there kind of thing, but I would never ever do that, especially international, without having my first night planned out. I wouldn't want to be roaming around day one or night one without accommodation. So always have that much planned in advance. Never, ever, ever share information with somebody you're, you're, you're meeting on the road. You don't share accommodation information. You don't share personal information. You might think, oh, we're kindred spirits. We're both traveling alone. This is great. You don't know. And, and so we say never really do that. Another thing that people don't think about, you get a pack light if you're alone. You, you, you're, you're schlepping that bag yourself. There might be a bellman at some of your hotels, maybe not. You're getting off of a plane and you're going to get in a public transportation or maybe you prearrange like a smart girl, the, the transfer. You're still carrying it from the plane through the airport to that transfer. And then if you're really going to go a little bit rogue and kind of do some train traveling and things like that, that bag is your responsibility. Now you might want to be the most glamorous traveler in the world, but be smart. One base color, make it be navy, make it be black, make it be beige, whatever it is. A couple of other pieces that go with it. Jewelry is light. Scarves are light. All of that stuff can be bagged up and, and I mean, costume jewelry, not expensive jewelry. I was going to say, Rose, like my, my advice would be do not wear any sort of precious jewelry whatsoever. Make it all costume jewelry. Nope. Costume jewelry. So that scarf, the costume jewelry, you wear, you change it up. The other thing I always say is I'm not going to see this person tomorrow anyway. If I wear the same outfit twice, who's going to know? So pack light, that's a, that's a really great one. Then the other thing is if you're, if you are hoping not to eat alone, like I, I don't want to walk into this restaurant. What are other ways I can maybe eat, dine with somebody without actually having met these people? Think about things like cooking classes. You've learned something and now you're 
eating the meal that you've cooked, maybe themed dinners. Lots of times at the hotel, maybe you will have talked to the concierge, but there might be some kind of a themed dinner that, that you can join in on. So there's lots of ways that you can enjoy a meal without actually eating alone. Another tip, especially in, say, for example, Ireland, in the UK, uh, not so much in Italy, but in some of the other European countries, you can just walk in and eat at the bar. You know, we do that here pretty regularly and don't think of anything about it. Now it's not awkward. I'm not sitting at a booth or a table for four by myself. I'm at the bar. And if I choose to engage in conversation, I can. And if I don't, I don't have to. So those are just some of the, the, of the tricks and the, and the things to do. The other thing is to keep your documents secured. That's the most critical thing. A U.S. passport is worth so much money on the black market, I can't even tell you. And so that's the most important thing. Take copies with you and keep those copies in a different area. Maybe you've locked up your passport in your safe and you had an experience where somebody got in your safe. So if they took that, you would have a copy of the front page of your passport. If you need to go to the embassy and get a rush passport, that will save you right that. That one thing will save you 24 hours by having that front page. Another thing, leave that copy with somebody in the US. If somehow or another you get separated from your copy, can they scan and send to the embassy that, that for you? So that will help a lot, but money can be replaced. Credit cards can be replaced. Passports are, are your most critical piece of documentation. So keep that in mind as you're flaunting your bag around. <laughs> I know. And that's really good advice. Having somebody back home with a copy of your passport. Never thought of that one. We always travel with copies of our passport. And, you know, again, I'm thinking about my worst case scenario and my experience. I remember the, the resort where my ring was stolen from. I remember hearing another person staying at the resort yelling at a manager because their passports were gone from their room. So I just think about those poor people in that situation. Like everything else can go by the wayside, but man, you lose your passport or it's stolen. That's your, that's everything in there. The other thing I want to mention about passports is that many, many countries have a validity rule, which means your passport must be valid for X amount of months after your departure date. It's hard to explain that to a U.S. citizen. My passport should be valid for 10 full years and it should be valid right up until it expires. The issue there is if you do in fact end up staying longer in a country that you intended to leave for any number of reasons, you love it so much, you have unlimited vacation and you wanna stay two more weeks or you get hurt or injured or hospitalized or whatever it might be. If that passport expired while you were still there, now you wouldn't be able to get back into the country, into our country. And so that's why governments, some Caribbean governments in Mexico and some of those have three to six month validity requirements. So many of us have not taken that old passport out of a lockbox for over a year because of COVID. Now we're finding people coming in with this pent up demand. Oh money they have not yet spent because they've saved it for over a year, they're ready to go only to discover that not either it's completely expired or they don't meet the validity requirements. Now you're paying to rush that passport. And so that can be done, but it's not as easy as it once was. All the passport offices throughout the U.S. are open and running at capacity, but we've heard that it, we should allow 10 to 12 weeks for passport process. I, and that was my next question, Rose. And how does that compare to the past, what people are used to? Yeah, it used to be four to six. Okay. Another good tip. Like, I, to your point, people are ready to go, but maybe their passport isn't. And that could hold them up. It, it, it's a sad thing. Uh, um, we have eight branch offices and I communicate with them uh, usually weekly. And I, I've heard that story so many times. Four couples ready to go. One guy's passport expired. They don't get to come along. It just makes Oh, 
you, nobody wants that to happen. Well, I think that I, I got all my questions answered today, and there's so much changing in your in the travel industry overall, and there's so much information that consumers need to know. Um, as it changes too. So is there, um, again, you talked about, can you repeat that website address if people are looking or researching other countries? Yep, it's travel.state.gov. Bookmark that, keep that handy. It's got the step enrollment, it's got passport information, it's got renewal information, and then it has country by country information for you. Thank you so much, Rose. Is there anything you'd like to add for anybody who's listening today regarding travel? Well, our our new mantra is, where would you be without your travel agent? So all I can say is, if you have been coloring your own hair and changing your own oil and doing your own travel for all these years, it's time for you to let somebody else take care of those travel needs for you because you don't know what you don't know. Let us help you. Let a travel advisor be your best friend. Everybody needs to get out on the road when they're comfortable with it. And when they do, we're here for you. And thank you so much, Rose. We appreciate all your insights and expertise today. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for listening. And if you want to hear more Soul Source, subscribe to the show. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts. And if there's something you want us to talk about, we can do that too. We have a page. It's on Facebook. It's called the Soul Source Society. And it's where we interact with listeners. We get content ideas for future shows. We talk about past content. And overall, we just have a lot of fun. That's Soul Source Society on Facebook. We hope to see you there. Soul Source is brought to you by Red Shoes Inc., a leading agency that specializes in crisis and strategic communications, media relations, social media, and so much more. To learn more about Soul Source and Red Shoes, visit us at redshoesinc.com.